It's the Mustang Insider Show presented by Cal Portland, the largest building materials company of cement and construction material products on the West Coast. Now, here's Chris Sylvester, the voice of the Mustangs. We welcome you to another edition of the Cal Poly Mustang Insider powered by Cal Portland. We come down the stretch of the 2021-2022 athletic year. Cal Poly baseball, one of the hottest teams in the country. They have put together eight straight wins. And what I think the most impressive part of the eight game winning streak is they've only trailed once in the eight games. So it has been a dominant stretch. They put double figures in the run column four times during the eight game winning streak. It's the longest such winning streak for Cal Poly since the Big West champion team in 2014 strung together 12 straight wins. Mustangs have had plenty of weekly awards this year. Drew Thorpe has won Big West pitcher of the week three times. Noah Larkins won it once. And we can add a fourth hitter to win Big West Player of the Week. Stafford did it last week. Brooks Lee has done it this year. Uh, now Joe York does it uh, for the first time in his Mustang career. He is our guest on the Cal Poly Mustang Insider. Big Joe, thanks so much for taking some time to chat with us. How do you describe the stretch that you've been on? You've hit safely in 18 straight games. You just won Big West Player of the Week. But more importantly, the stretch that this team has gone on winning eight in a row. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me, first off. Um, it's been great. I mean, winning's fun. Winning cures all. Uh, so everyone in the clubhouse is loose right now and having a good time. And I think winning and fun go hand in hand. You're having fun when you win, and you win when you have fun. So we're doing a good job putting the two together right now. And then personally for me, I mean, this is kind of an otherworldly experience right now. I don't think I've ever had a stretch like this in my entire career. So that that's always great and feeling good at the plate right now. I was going to ask you, a T-ball, middle school, high school, you never put together a stretch like this, huh? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe back in coach pitch days, but I, <laughs> not that I can remember. Well, much has been made of, obviously, you know, protecting Brooks Lee in the batting order. And, and for much of the year, if not the entire season, you have hit right behind Brooks outside of maybe one or two games where a left-hander's thrown, you've hit a little bit lower in the order. You had that one game against Bakersfield where Brooks hit leadoff. But outside of that, uh, you have hit behind arguably the best player in all of college baseball uh, much of the last two seasons. Has the pitch selection for you changed at all from your first year at Cal Poly last season compared to what guys are throwing you here? Yeah, I mean, uh, I definitely had to get a little more aggressive this year compared to last year. Uh, I hit seventh or eighth pretty much every day last year, so I knew I was going to get – most of the time I was going to get more than one good pitch to hit and then at bat. And where I'm hitting in the lineup now, that's just not usually how it is. So if I let that one good one go by, that could be the only good one I'm going to get in the at-bat. Um, but, yeah, to speak to what you're saying about hitting behind Brooks, I mean, he is the best hitter in the country. So I just need to make sure I can have quality at-bats behind him so that they can't just put him on every time he comes up to the plate. Joe York is our guest on this week's edition of the Cal Poly Mustang Insider, reigning Big West Player of the Week. Forgot to name drop CV. Colin Viegas also won the award uh, earlier this season back in April. The hitting streak is at 18 games. Last week, 11 hits in 19 at-bats. You drove in 11 runs. You've had a nice little power surge as well. You had five extra base hits, four doubles. You smoked a homer on the road at Cal State Fullerton. Uh, this has been a great stretch. We've talked about it. You are the first Mustang to put together two five hit games in a season ever. I, that's kind of hard to believe. There's been a lot of great hitters to come through this program since it's moved to division one. And in the 20 years, Larry Lee's been the head coach. When you heard that, what, what popped into your head? Yeah, that was uh, news to me for sure. Um, it was pretty surreal to hear that. Uh, especially you think of an old MIDI alum, Mitch Hanniger, uh, who now I've played at the same high school and the same college at. And have worked out with a couple times in the off season back in Santa Cruz. Um, but yeah, some big names have come through here. So that's more shocking that nobody else has done it than it is that I did it. <laughs> yeah. Brooks Lee had, had, uh, had not have a five hit game in his Cal Poly career. He's had some monster RBI games. It's six runs batted in against Fullerton last season. You had the first five RBI game of this year over the weekend against Cal State Fullerton. So not only are you getting on base a ton, the on-base streak is north of 20 now, but uh, you're also driving in runs. It's been a, a real boost to the offense to, to have that run production 
out of your spot in the batting order. I started tracking this when your hitting streak was at eight, nine games, but you, you finished with a 227 batting average last year, well over 100 points higher as it sits right now with six games left in the regular season. What was your off season like? Did you play at all last summer? And what did you really seek to improve upon from your first full college season in 2021? Now you're kind of a veteran hitter, dare I say, in 2022. Yeah, um, I mean, I didn't get to play summer ball. I had ended up having a stress fracture in my foot um, for a good chunk of last season. Uh, I kind of just toughed it out and then decided to be better to take a few weeks off at the beginning of the summer and then just stay here and slow and uh, grind here. And that's where the swing change happened. I worked with Bridge just about uh, – Coach Justin Bridgman uh, just about every day this summer. Uh, we went through a lot of uh, – grueling and not very fun days in the cages um trying to make some swing changes and we're kind of reaping the benefits of them now and this is the first time in the last probably year and a half two years that I'm able to be in the batter's box and not think about my swing which is in my opinion a huge thing as a hitter if you're your mind's cluttered if you're thinking about anything mechanically it's going to be really tough to recognize pitches um be on the same page with pitch sequences and sitting on the right stuff um so it's those swing changes have gotten me to the point now where I can just kind of be in the box and it's like a blank mind. It's just see ball, hit ball, uh, rather than last year for most of the season, I was thinking, you know, about something mechanical with my swing. Yeah. 227 was the batting average last year, but you did finish second in the big West in walks. And as you know, in today's day and age of analytical baseball, that on base average kind of means a little bit more than the batting average, Uh, no matter how you get on base, it's just about getting on base, but now you're doing it with the hits You're doing it with the walks. I want to go back. You mentioned you went to Archbishop Mitty High School. That was actually the first time I discovered you and and your two brothers. You guys played in the Scott Boris Baseball Championship game. And and I walked up to you after the bus ride home from Pepperdine the other day. And and it popped into my head. I was like, wait, I I think we had done an interview before. And we did a live dugout interview in the middle of that game at the University of San Diego. And that's when you were in your senior year getting ready to go to Boise State as they started their baseball program back up. But you're the oldest of three brothers. And uh, your your middle uh, brother, Nick, was a first-round pick of the Red Sox, went 17th overall out of high school in 2020, now playing in their minor league system. And your youngest brother, Zach, is getting ready to finish up and head to a really good program, top 25 team right now, Grand Canyon in Phoenix. So you you eat, sleep, and breathe baseball, or at least you did with your three brothers in high school. How cool was it to share the field with them at Mitty? It was awesome. I wish I had realized it a little more, how special that was when I was there Um, during that season. Now looking back, um, I realized just how special that was. I mean, there was a game uh, that we hit, Zach hit second, Nick hit first, and I hit third. So it was, you know, N York, Z York, and J York, one, two, three in the lineup. My mom still has that lineup card posted on the fridge uh, at home. So now looking back, I realize how cool it was to play with them. Um, I was definitely closer with Nick the last couple of years of high school uh, than I was with Zach. Um, so I definitely was grateful for my time with Nick but I definitely wish I would have appreciated my time with little Zachy a little more than I did. You mentioned mom. She was an all American softball star in the nineties at Fresno state. Uh, Pop was no slouch either. He was a swimmer at the air force Academy. Uh, How much did their athletic background play into you and your brothers playing baseball at a high level? And when did you start to develop a passion for the game of baseball? Yeah, uh, I mean, so like you said, mom's softball, she had a swing and a bat and hitting as soon as we could walk. Um, so and she taught all of us how to hit left handed, just like she did. Uh, Nick, unfortunately, got turned around when he was like five or six. One of his coaches said that's not natural and switched him. And it, it's worked out for him. But uh, Zach and I are still left handed hitters. Uh, and yeah, I mean, she taught us how to love the game and play the game the right way. And that's, you know something that she preached to us from a young age. And my grandpa also played college baseball. So he was a huge part of our life when we were younger, Uh, just in terms of like enjoying baseball, like watching angels games growing up when we lived down in Southern California uh, with him. And when my mom was at work, he was the one that was outside throwing us pop-ups in the front yard and stuff like that. Um, So it's really just been a whole big family contribution to get us to where we are now. 
Joe York is the reigning Big West Player of the Week. He's our guest on the Cal Poly Mustang Insider. Mustang's not your first college stop. Uh, coming out of high school in 2019, we mentioned you committed to Boise State. They were starting their baseball program back up. Obviously, none of us saw what was coming in early 2020. So you got to play a couple weeks at Boise State before the shutdown. What went into your decision to go to Boise out of high school? Was Cal Poly a program that maybe recruited you out of high school? And after things fell apart in Boise, how did you wind up here? Uh, so no, Cal Poly didn't recruit me at all out of high school. Um, I didn't really have all that many options coming out of high school. Uh, a couple local schools. And then uh, my travel ball coach, John Zuber, uh, we were hitting with him one day in the, it must've been the fall of my junior year. And he came up to me and just said, hey, one of my old buddies is starting up a program in Boise. Uh, he's a great coach. You would love him. Like, I'm going to give you all his information. Uh, and the relationship started from there. He came out and watched a game my junior year of high school uh, in the springtime. And then I got out there on a visit uh, probably right after season and committed by the end of the summer going into my senior year of high school. Um, and then, yeah, when that all uh, turned sideways. The first thing I did that very day was make a list of schools that I'd be interested in. My brother, Nick, uh, actually came on a visit here to Cal Poly his freshman year. He played in the camp, uh, and did the whole unofficial stuff, um, and loved it and loved coach Lee and said that if it was a power five school, he would have came here in a heartbeat, uh, with how big of a name he was in recruiting. He just felt he couldn't go to a big West school. Um, so knowing that, and, you know, knowing his, love for the game and we uh we value a lot of the same stuff in a coach and in a baseball program so knowing how much he loved it here uh made my decision super easy as soon as I got on the phone with coach Lee what was it like when you got the news in 2020 that Boise State would no longer have baseball yeah it was, it was surreal uh I was playing summer ball in Salt Lake City Utah I was living uh in a three-bedroom house that we rented so we could play summer ball with six guys who are all either on the Boise State team or incoming freshmen the next year. We woke up to an email saying that the program was being cut and that there'd be a Zoom call in a couple of hours. Uh, so that was those first like two hours before that Zoom call, it was kind of like shock um, was the first reaction for sure. And then we had the Zoom call and they explained what was going on. And then we pretty much got told like, here's your chance to get in the transfer portal. Like, we'll get all that figured out for you. Um, and right after that, that meeting, I made the list and had a phone call with Coach Lee probably 20 or 30 minutes after that list was made. Wow. So you got going quickly. That's kind of how the portal works, if you know anything about it. Uh, it wasn't just you. It was Reagan Doss. It was Travis Weston as well. They came over from Boise State. We all kind of look at the transactions as one big package. But how much did you talk to those two guys as you went through the portal process and eventually decided on Cal Poly. Yeah, they were super interested in Reagan. Um, and once, oh, uh, I believe the name was Elijah Green, once he signed a free agent deal that off season and they were looking for an outfielder, uh, it was a done deal with Reagan. Uh, so I didn't have to do much convincing other than trying to get a Texas boy to want to come live in California, um, which was pretty easy. Reagan and I were roommates at Boise. We've been roommates the last two years. Uh, he's one of my best friends. So that was, wasn't too difficult to do. Um, and then Travis, they were very interested in another left-handed pitcher we had at Boise who ended up going or committing to UW, uh, Washington. And I told uh, Coach Lee, I was like, hey, we have another left-handed pitcher who was our Friday night guy uh, at Boise. He's an older guy, more mature, um, kind of not someone you're going to have to do a lot of work with. He can come in and get, out, get outs right away. Uh, and 20 minutes later, Travis Weston calls me and says, Hey man, like Cal Poly just called me. I'm super interested. And this is after, you know, I've already committed here. Um, and yeah, within two weeks from that, Travis had committed also. And obviously the 2021 season was a little bit bizarre out of the gate. Finally got some fans in the final month and a half or so. I know you guys kind of caught fire too little too late last year, winning 11 of 12. You've won eight straight. Now you have six more games on the regular season docket three at home this weekend against Davis at Baggett Stadium, and, and then not a bad place to close the regular year as we get to go to the island and play Hawaii for the final three games. Now, look, I, I've done enough 
trashing of the RPI metric in college baseball this week. I had a great conversation with Larry Lee before the Pepperdine game on Tuesday. It doesn't make a whole ton of sense as to why teams are slotted in certain places in the RPI. And I know this is a game by game approach for you guys, but if you keep doing what you've done the last eight over these final six, what's your pitch to the committee to give a look to the Cal Poly Mustangs? And if you're talking about wanting to market college baseball postseason better, no better way to do it than to put the sport's best player in the field of 64. A hundred percent. I mean, you get a super hot team with the best position player in the country, a uh, potential first round Friday night guy. Uh, and Oh yeah. Don't, don't forget to mention that your best player in the country's dad is also the head coach. I mean, I don't think you can have a better storyline uh, when it comes to that side of it. And then throw on top of that hot streak to end the year. Uh, we've, Knock on wood, going into these last two series, we've only won lot. We've only lost one conference series. I mean, we've done everything we could do from our end. Um, so, but I mean, at this point, we're just trying to win as many games as we can. We're trying to do everything we can to not give them a reason to keep us out and see what happens. Yeah, and, and I, you know, you look at other sports traditionally, especially the college football playoff that came together almost a decade ago, and they always seem to give a little more love to teams that finish strong. And you guys certainly have a chance to do so with this eight-game winning streak and six left. Last thing for you, Big Joe, it is senior day on Sunday. What if some of the veterans are around the clubhouse that will be honored uh, for one last time at Baggage Stadium uh, meant to you in your first two years with the program? Yeah, I mean, a lot of great guys. Uh, a little different from last year. I think we only had four seniors. This year we got nine or 10 sorry I was getting a little information from Claire to my left uh but yeah I mean these these were the guys who were a little closer in my age uh when I transferred in so there were some of the guys that took me in last year um even though I wasn't a freshman I was still new uh I think of Tate Samuelson uh obviously Travis making the the switch over here with me uh Dylan Villalobos another great leader uh guys who I look up to and there's more of a friendship relation than um, some of the seniors from last year's class, for sure, uh, just because I'm closer in age with these guys. Uh, and now, you know, being through it with them for two years rather than just the one year, uh, I'm definitely going to miss a lot of the seniors that are heading out after this year. That is Joe York, the defending Big West Player of the Week, one of the hottest hitters in the country on one of the hottest teams in the country as we go into the penultimate weekend of the college baseball regular season hey you had four hits tuesday why don't you go defend that conference player of the week title this weekend thanks so much for your time joe thanks for having me chris all right a special thanks to joe york joining us on the program this week as always we'd like to thank our supporters am sun solar if you're worried about rising pg and e rates go solar pay less on your monthly bills visit amsunsolar.com your local solar experts Podcast brought to you by Dignity Health, offering all-star treatment you can trust. Learn more about healthcare services. Visit DignityHealth.org slash Central Coast. You've been watching and maybe listening to the Cal Poly Mustang Insider from Learfield. This has been the Mustang Insider Show presented by Cal Portland with a commitment to environmental leadership that has made the organization stronger and is the primary choice of contractors. The Mustang Insider Show. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Cal Poly Sports Network.